I just got on this city bus, which is headed down near the jail, where my best friend Sprocket is being held for, well, essentially, for freaking out humans on the beach. The timing is particularly unfortunate, because we were looking forward to this Sunday night when we were going to celebrate the 30th anniversary of one of our favorite action films. Die hard. Fortunately, my disguise seems to be holding up. But I must get Sprocket out of jail. Nobody knows the bad films I've seen. Nobody knows my song. Oh, oh, oh hey everybody. Sprocket the Cinemonkey here. So last week when Zoom and I were at the beach, I decided to wander around and say hi to some of the lovely ladies gathered there. Well, it turns out they weren't expecting to be approached by a talking ape, and some of them got a little alarmed. Out came the tasers, somebody called the cops, and here I am. And since I'm caught, no doubt the evil government conspiracy we're running from will catch me, and I will suffer a fate worse than death. I'll miss the 30th anniversary screening of Die Hard Zoom and I had planned. Die Hard is more than a film at this point, or even a franchise. Why, it's a genre unto itself. In fact, I'm going, going to review the, the new Die Hard one of you right, right now. now. A few years ago, a study was released which said that cats can understand simple logic and have a basic grasp of the laws of physics. This puts them ahead of Ross and Marshall Thurber, writer and director of the new action movie Skyscraper. Dwayne Johnson joins the long list of action stars who've tried to step into Bruce Willis' shoes. And in fairness, he did take them off so he could make fists with his toes. If he's not going to wear them, I mean... Lionsgate and Sabin Films, the 21st century's answer to Canon Films, presents Black Water, starring Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yes, he is still making actual movies, not just YouTube green screen videos, which, by the way, we really appreciate. The man who gave us Die Hard at a Hockey Game more than 20 years later, has matured so much as an actor that he's finally ready for Die Hard on a submarine. Skyscraper comes full circle and brings us back to the original setting, namely a high-rise building. On top of that, it directly mixes Die Hard with Dante's Towering Inferno in what writer-director Thurber clearly sees as an homage. But Skyscraper is an excruciating reminder that no matter how much you love the source material, you can't turn a ripoff into an homage just by calling it that. The story centers around Scott Wheeler, obviously the perfect name for Van Damme, a deep cover CIA operative looking for a leak in the agency, starting off by following the bold strategy of sleeping with his much younger partner, because hey, why not? He wakes up the next day after being shot, and while trying to escape, his eye candy tagalong is killed. Wheeler wakes up in a CIA black site prison on board a retrofitted nuclear submarine because you can't get into Gitmo this time of year without booking ahead. Johnson plays Will Sawyer, a former FBI agent turned security expert. I kept wondering why they never explained him having a thick Austrian accent. Then I remembered I was thinking of Arnold Schwarzenegger, but in my defense, they really are more or less the same actor. Anywho, after a traumatic accident that both robs Will of his leg and starts the movie off on a stunningly depressing note, we flash forward a few years and Will is married to Carla Gugino, played by former Scream and Wild Things star Nev Campbell. They have two children. The boy is a frog and the girl is a pig. Will is handling security for the world's tallest building, known as the Pearl, because of a large spherical structure at the top that makes the skyscraper look like the tallest, most oddly shaped golf tee in history. It houses several floors that function as their own society, and despite the risks highlighted by Sawyer, his bosses insist that it's impenetrable. True to Sawyer's belief, the building comes under attack by terrorists who start a fire, because why not start off your evening by setting fire to the building you're inside, while Will's family is trapped inside, forcing him to take action. 
Matters are further complicated when he finds himself framed for the attack. The Muscles from Brussels is being held captive by Agent Patrick Ferris, played by Patrick Fitzpatrick. Patrick Fitzpatrick, come home with me now. Sorry. I thought that Sprocket might hear that joke and sort of tune into my mental signal, like a, a Skywalker thing. Anyway, Ferris believes Wheeler is responsible for the deaths of his fellow CIA agents, but Agent Rhodes, played by Al Sapienza, who you may remember as Tomato Man, from the 1990 episode of Who's the Boss, entitled Inherit the Wine, but probably you won't, believes that Wheeler is innocent. If you're going to this film hoping for a more real-world action picture in the age of the superhero movie, you will be extremely disappointed. Skyscraper is an outrageous, over-the-top cartoon from beginning to end, but it's both missing the intensity of a late 80s, early 90s dark and violent action film and a light, tongue-in-cheek sense of fun one usually associates with a Dwayne Johnson movie. It's an incredibly awkward one-hour and 40-minute mashup of Die Hard and Dante's Towering Inferno with odd excursions into Star Trek The Next Generation, there's an inescapable feeling that in the first draft of the screenplay, the sphere was a full-on holodeck. The red-green show, manliness can be measured in lengths of duct tape, and Scooby-Doo! Needless to say, things go wrong, and soon Wheeler is fighting for his own survival as he is chased throughout a cramped submarine, not too cramped, of course, because this is a movie. And the captain and the crew on the upper deck amazingly cannot hear the men below decks recklessly firing machine guns at anything that might vaguely resemble Van Damme, despite the fact that it was clearly established in the hunt for Red October that a chorus of men singing carries through the ocean from one submarine to another. Oh, and speaking of things that resemble Van Damme, Dolph Lundgren is also in this film. When Wheeler asks the German prisoner in his adjoining cell, what's your name? The prisoner responds, Marco, at which point the audience shouts, Polo, back at him. Johnson works well enough most of the way, though he struggles a bit through the opening section. The film establishes Sawyer is suffering from PTSD caused through the incident wherein he lost his leg, but doesn't want to go deeply enough into it to run the risk of actually making the character interesting. And Johnson, being big enough to have his own climate, is both a strength and a weakness. Sure, it makes him credible when he's beating snot out of people, but there comes a point when having to lug around that much muscle can be a liability. And I'm pretty sure that point comes right about when you're climbing 97 stories up a crane on a false leg so you can jump across to hang off of a building. Meanwhile, Campbell and Thurber are trying so hard to avoid making her character seem like a weak and fearful damsel in distress that she ends up seeming vaguely disinterested. She says, my husband and children are up in that burning building and I'm not waiting one more damn minute. In the exact tone most people would use to say, I specifically ordered this without tomatoes. Does anyone remember when Van Damme and Lundgren stood out as the known actors in their films? This one instead relies rather heavily on their seasoned level of charm and natural presence on camera to overcome the shortcomings of everything else. And it really soars whenever Lundgren is on screen exuding a sense of introspective and cool intellect and a laid-back feeling of charisma. And if that doesn't frighten the bloody blithering bejeebus out of you, I suspect that frankly nothing much ever could. But by far the most entertaining aspect of this little gem is the captioning on the iTunes version. Supposedly it also opened to a limited theatrical release. Anyway, when Wheeler is asked where he keeps the drive, his answer of let me check my pocket is rendered let me check my bucket, which makes loads of sense. And most amusingly, when the guards discuss the amount of torture that Marco withstood before cracking, such as waterboarding, etc., the phrase, a rectal feeding, becomes 
I am not making this up. Erectile feeding. Viewers at home, if any of you can come up with the vaguest theory as to how this would even work, I beg you not to share it! Thurway, the director, does a decent job with the action, and he's aided by a great cinematographer and strong editors, but he's stuck with the enormous drag factor of his own asinine script, which allows the movie to only go so far. Dwayne Johnson has developed into an engaging and likable movie star, but his chief appeal is his self-aware sense of humor, which is almost entirely missing here. If he's going to last, he has to start working with better directors and making better movies. Other than the delightful Moana and the highly entertaining Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, he's mostly making instantly forgettable flicks that are unworthy of his charisma. Skyscraper is rated PG-13 for violence and profanity. I gave it two bananas and I recommend you see it on discount night if you're going to go. Don't wait for video, you'll just want to turn it off and pop in Die Hard, followed by that one scene from Wild Things over and over, because that's the kind of person you are. Blackwater is rated R for violence and language, and it gets a rotten banana peel from me. Oh, no, it looks like we're getting close to my stop. I'd better pull the cord. Oh, great! Finally, Zoom is here to bail me out! I can't wait to go home and get ready for the Die Hard screening. We'll need to stop off for Twinkies and Broken Glass. Wait, you're not Zoom, you're... Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, help! 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 Cliffhanger ending! Ah!